Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Pod Peak. So as 2022 comes to a close, I want to show you all my top favorite pieces of studio gear that I've used this last year. Plus, if you stick around to the very end, I'm going to throw in a bonus favorite as well. So let's dive in. All right, so gear. It's kind of a blessing and a curse. If you're like me, you're always trying to refine your gear. You're buying and selling things that work or don't work. You're constantly tweaking the things to get them to work just the way you want them to. Well, for me this last year, I think that I finally got my gear set up the way I wanted in my studio. So much so that I don't think I'm gonna have to change much moving forward in 2023. So with that, let's take a look. Number one, Ferrofish Pulse 1680 DA Converter. So for years, I'd been wanting to set my studio up so that I could mix using my analog outboard gear. One of the challenges was finding an ADDA converter that had a combination of build and sound quality, price, and features. After a lot of research, I chose the Ferrofish Pulse 16, and I haven't regretted it once. Some of the key features of the Ferrofish include 16 pairs of TRS balanced inputs and outputs. This has allowed me to connect my outboard gear for analog processing and you can watch a video I made showing you how to mix with outboard gear in Reaper right up here. ADAT I.O. The Ferrofish comes with two ADAT inputs and outputs, which allows me to connect to my Audient ID22 interface, which makes it simple to work with Reaper or any other DAW for that matter. Word Clock I.O. The Pulse 16 can generate its own high precision clock it can send this clock or receive a master clock via the BNC IO using a coaxial cable. Whether the Pulse 16 runs in master or slave mode or termination on off can be set via the display. Other features include a useful internal routing matrix, optional MADI upgrade, and a dual TFT display. Eventually I hope to do an in-depth review of the Ferrofish Pulse 16 as I believe it's the best ADDA converter that you can buy at this price point, which comes in at roughly around $1,100 USD. I use the Ferrofish Pulse 16 pretty much every day, and it's become an integral part of my studio setup that I can see definitely moving into the future. Number two, Aventone Pro Goss Monitors. Up until 2022, I'd been using a pair of M Audio BX5 monitors that I'd purchased all the way back in 2011. Talk about getting my money's worth. This last year, I decided that I wanted to upgrade my monitors, but I also wanted to do it without breaking the bank. After much research, I settled on the Aventone Pro Goss seven inch monitors, which normally run around $800, but can currently be purchased for under 600. When I first set these monitors up, I was completely blown away by how much better things sounded right off the bat. I mean, it was unbelievable. The way I would describe the Goss monitors is accurate. I like to mix at fairly quiet levels. And for me, the amount of detail that comes through in these speakers is astonishing. I get just enough low end that I feel like I'm not missing anything. And the top end is crisp and clear, but there's also a nice balance. The monitors are fairly flat, but you still get just enough low and top end to make them the perfect studio speaker. The main features include a 7-inch AC10 MLF derived woofer with a distinctive white cone. The woofer produces a pronounced snap, fast transient response, and low end response down to 30 Hz. Tweeter yields excellent transient response and exceptional high frequency, extension up to 22 kHz. A three position high trim switch compensates for additional room deficiencies. And there's independent gain controls on each speaker for easy system collaboration. There's a lot of speakers on the market, and there's probably a bunch of monitors at this price point that you might think would sound better than the Goss model. That said, I've been working in audio for almost 20 years now. I've mixed through a ton of monitors. I think anyone looking to spend just over 500 for monitors are going to be really happy with the Aventone Pro Goss speakers. Number three, a dual monitor setup. Okay, so this is something that I've put off for years. I've seen a lot of other studio engineers using a dual monitor setup, but for whatever reason, I just kept putting it off. 
Well, in 2022, I had some podcast jobs that were requiring me to work off written scripts while simultaneously editing in Reaper. After working on just one screen for a couple weeks, I hit my breaking point on that project and I finally ended up getting a second monitor. It instantly made my life so much easier. In fact, I think investing in a dual monitor in 2022 was probably the overall best decision that I made for increasing my productivity and saving time. Now, because of the way that I built my desk, and by the way, you can see a video of how I custom built my studio desk right up here, my monitor goes below my main monitor, which for me works out great. I bought an AOC 16 inch USB 3.0 portable LED HD monitor from Best Buy. I wanted something that was fairly small and worked with just a USB cable. I paid $125 for this monitor, which seems like a fair price. But I have to say for the amount of time that this monitor has saved me and how much easier it's made my everyday workflow, the monitor has definitely paid for itself already many times over. Some of my favorite ways to use the monitor are having my Reaper session open on the top screen and having the scripts that I'm working off on my dual screen. When working in Reaper, of course, it's nice to have my mixer set up on the lower screen now, rather than having to toggle it on and off on the main screen. And finally, I love having plugins open on my lower screen, and I find it especially useful when I'm mastering, as I can constantly evaluate where my levels are in real time. So if you're looking for a way to speed up your workflow or just simply the way you work in your DAW in 2023, I'd highly recommend getting a dual monitor. You won't regret it. Number four, PreSonus fader port. Now, this pick is interesting because I've actually owned this fader port since about 2018, but I started to use it more this last year, not just for controlling certain functions in Reaper, but mainly for writing automation. I'm actually super comfortable doing automation manually in Reaper. It's as simple as shift click and you're off and running. Of course, you can also just hold down the option or alt key and left drag to create automation. But this year, I found myself wanting to go back to the simplicity and ease of use of using a hand fader. And after I saw this video by Mark Daniel Nelson on the Produce Like a Pro channel, it reminded me of the power of using a fader when writing automation. One of the things Mark talks about is getting that extra two or three percent out of your mixes. And one of the ways you can do that is by using a fader to write your automation. Some benefits of using a fader are that it's simple and intuitive and it has a natural feel. It's a much less robotic feeling than using mouse clicks. Also using a fader allows you to mix with your ears and your feelings while you mix, which will ultimately deliver more musical, more professional results. This last year, I created a lot of original music and did some music scores for podcasts. And one of the steps I built into my workflow was taking a last pass with my fader port to write volume automation for the music that sits under the narration. The results have definitely helped my final mixes get that last two to 3% of quality that Mark Daniel Nelson talks about. I'm using an old fader port, which happens to work really well in Reaper. You can find these online probably on Reverb or other places where you can buy used equipment, or you can find the newer models on Sweetwater and other places that sell fine music gear. Number five. Solid State Logic Fusion. Now I have a small but varied collection of analog outboard gear, ranging from Clark Technique, Black Lion Audio, Warm Audio, and Drummer. But if I was stuck on a desert island and I could choose only one piece of hardware, hands down, it would be the SSL Fusion. The Fusion is a stereo processor that can be used to add warmth or character to any audio signal. I like to refer to the Fusion as kind of a color box, as it adds a glue and a texture or a fur that's really hard to describe unless you actually hear it. The Fusion features a number of controls that allow users to shape the sounds of their audio signals, including a high pass filter, vintage drive, the amazing and simple Violet EQ, a high frequency compressor, stereo imaging, plus a transformer button that adds a little more sonic character. Every song or podcast that I work on gets run through the SSL Fusion. I use it every week in my studio, and what I love about it is that you can use all the components or just the ones you want. 
For example, if I just want to use the vintage drive, I can just use that. If I want to just use the Violet EQ, I can just use that. You can add a little or really grit things up. And because of that, I find the Fusion to be the most versatile piece of outboard gear I own. Uh, Fusion isn't necessarily a cheap piece of equipment as it comes in around $2,700. But if you're looking to add just one piece of gear that can give you as many options as possible, the Fusion is definitely worth the investment. Okay, so I told you that at the end of this video, I was gonna have a bonus favorite piece of gear that I used in 2022. So this final pick isn't as much a physical piece of gear as it is a studio tool. It's the amazing piece of software created by the amazing company Output called Arcade. Output Arcade is a software platform that allows users to create and customize their own music and sound effects using a wide range of virtual instruments and effects. It's designed for use by music producers, DJs, and other audio professionals, and offers a wide range of features and tools for creating, editing, and manipulating audio. Some of the features of Output Arcade include a virtual instrument library, a range of audio effects and processors, and the ability to create and edit audio loops and patterns. The software is available for purchase and download from the Output website. I've been using Output Arcade for a number of years now, but I found myself using it even more in 2022. For me, Arcade is an inspiration tool. If I'm looking for an idea or a vibe, I'll just open up Arcade and start clicking around. Before I know it, I'm usually onto creating something cool. I've used Arcade a lot for straight up music production, whether I need to find a unique beat or some sort of ear candy just to round things out. But in my field of podcast production, Arcade is really coming to its own. This last year, I've created podcast theme music for clients, primarily using Arcade. I've also used it as the bedrock of music scores that I've created for podcast series. And in general, Arcade is really useful if you're just looking for quick ambient bed music or atmosphere to help create a vibe for audio storytelling. I love Arcade because they're constantly updating libraries. You can download all the content onto an external hard drive to make it work quicker. Also, you can import your own samples and create custom libraries. It's a super versatile piece of software, and in my field, it's really indispensable. Arcade is a monthly subscription that costs $10 a month. In a world of endless online subscriptions, this might feel like a deterrent, but if you're a music or podcast producer, you'll find that the small monthly investment is well worth it. So I can't recommend Arcade enough. All right, well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a like and make sure and subscribe to the channel. And I'd love to hear about your favorite studio gear this last year. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. I really hope to devote more time to the YouTube channel in 2023. So we'll see what happens. But either way, I really appreciate everyone who subscribed this last year and I appreciate all the support you've given me. All right, well, that's it for today. Take care of yourselves. Peace out. We'll see you all in 2023.